Darren fed or is it source fed? That's a great question. Yeah. Darren, I'd like comment? an answer. Darren fed. Darren, Darren fed. Now it's I Darren don't fed. Fed. Change it the say <laughs> Have you ever been such good friends with somebody that you felt like you guys needed your own show about being best friends? Want a uh, six god to call me and say, yo, let's make an album. Were you going to make a watch the throne with Drake? <gasps> oh, oh my, my god. god. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have people tweet you every single day that you two are best friend goals and have posters of you guys up in their room with his dog? Have you ever wonder what it would be like if you put the effort into having a show with your best friend? It became actually pretty popular and then you toured the country with it, a show about being each other's best friends, and that's it. Before we start the podcast, like honestly, we want to try something different. You ready, Will? She left the phone, the messages, never called her back. Okay. Say it, Will. Ooh. Ooh, hit the... Okay. Okay, Will. Oh, sh Come on, Will. Yeah. Hit that sh Showed you. Trade it up. Trade it up. Yeah. yeah. I be I should trade it up. Say it again. I recently realized that I've never had a normal conversation before, but back in 2013, there wasn't such a clear way to monetize on having such a personality. It's I don't said the love. Change it, the not say it right, right before we started filming, Darren said he could whoop any of our asses and eat vanilla cake off of us. He said that. He did say that. That's not a thing you say. Darren to friends. said that he'll hurt my family in his dreams. <laughs> he did. He said, I'll crack your mother's leg. Yeah. Look at me twice. Yeah. He's practicing rap lines. He said, I'm going to cut your dad's brake line. So it's hard for him to get around. <laughs> Maybe you were there when we performed at South by South. West in Austin, Texas at Jake and Amir's HeadGum Podcast Festival. Yes. Intro! Oh, oh yeah, he was like, you gotta explain the podcast. When have I ever? When, when have, have I... we ever? We never do. We never do. Oh, it's the podcast where two guys talk about some that is barely relevant. That's the one thing I'm trying to learn from Jake and Amir. They're like great businessmen. Okay. Like, they know how to sell some They know how to intro a podcast. We don't I... know how to do that. I was watching Jake and Amir when I was a little boy. Of course, I suggested we put up a huge photo of Darren's dog, Catacomb, so the whole audience could see. Who was taking care of the dog at the time? I don't remember. But all good things do come to an end because being friends with me, I assume, is very difficult, especially if you wanted me to stay the way that I was when we first started being friends. <laughs> Well, what are you doing? No! I remember when I first started being friends with Darren when I was 19. This was like 2013 or 2012. I remember, you remember I was so uptight at the time, you know, I didn't curse, I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, and that was my personality. I remember telling Darren that I was never gonna change. At 19 years old, 11 years ago, I said I was never going to change and that was who I was going to be forever. I was so wrong. Chills here. I came here to take ass and bring names and I'm all out of bubble gum. If you listen to the She Didn't Text Back podcast, you got to listen to the behind the scenes of what it was like trying to be an artist in the 20 teens. You got to hear me speak at length and overshare what it was like trying to find myself during this time. So I think it was February or March of 2014, I finally got on SourceFed after auditioning and this was such a huge break for me. So many, after years of trying my hardest to be a YouTuber, an internet personality, it all just came in at once. All the people just started flooding in. Thousands and thousands of followers every single month. It was truthfully amazing. But what was crazy to me is was I finally got nearly everything I wanted and I was still so unhappy. I look back at some clips of podcasts I've done and I'm like, wow, oof, young me was so sad. Can I tell it anyway? It's, yeah. It was too dirty. It's really bad. I'm gonna say it anyway. Okay, I just can't wait for this awkward silence. I was like, I was gonna say that. I, okay, for the record, it was too bad. I was gonna say one time I was making out with a girl and I showed her my side letter. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. That's what I said. Moving on. Yeah, such moving a dark on. place. As opposed to me now, who focuses on his health and his fitness and his mental health, and that's why I feel so strong on the inside and out. So in this video, I'll talk about she didn't text back story from the beginning 
to how it ended, how it came back, and to where things are now, because people constantly ask me about Darren, and I have to explain to you why I haven't talked about it. So people will stop asking me. You'd be surprised to find out that Jake and Amir is a huge part of this story. So when I first started watching YouTube videos in about 2007, 2008, or when I first started watching personalities, was when my friend at the youth center I was going to, I believe she introduced me to college humor in Jake and, and Amir videos. I became obsessed with Jake and Amir, like so many people did back then. Like my personality as a teenager was highly wheezy waiter, uh, Kev Jumba, and Jake and Amir. And that's really what inspired my videos in the early days, those things. But at the time, I, I have my best friend, Jose, who doesn't like to appear on camera, but I had not yet found an on-camera friend to be in videos with me until I met Darren and we just instantly linked and clicked up. We, me and Darren actually met at the interviews to be interns for Philip DeFranco. It had not yet been announced that we were actually interviewing to be interns for SourceFed. So I kind of felt duped when I had got the position. And they were like, oh, you're not even really working for Phil. You're actually working for this new thing, SourceFed, that nobody knows about. R believe it or not, at the time, I was like, what? Hello, Internet. My name is Philip DeFranco, and I'd like to introduce you to my new channel found only here on YouTube. Source fed. Uh, so anyway, I remember it was a huge group interview, and there's a photo of it somewhere. Um, and uh, Darren, it was a group interview, and Darren just kept laughing at my jokes. And I was like, wow, this is crazy that, uh, you know, somebody likes me so much off the bat. I was very insecure at the time. Um, and it was just like that. We were just close friends, and coincidentally, he lived down the street from me, and we would just hang out every day, and... When you hang out every day with somebody like that, especially when you're young, you're like, man, we need a show. And it actually wasn't originally called Shooting Text Back. We called it something else like Cover Brothers or something like that because it would be cold and we'd get under the covers and start talking. And uh, that's how Shooting Text Back came to be. I, I, I'm going to beat his ass. All right. I'll play him. Why not? Let's do it. champion, William Haynes. Where the paddles at? So, Jake and Amir. I was heavily influenced by Jake and Amir in my early career, and I really wanted to have a show like that. So, I wanted to be Amir, and obviously, Darren uh, was Jake. But some of my favorite episodes of Jake and Amir was when they s switched personalities, and Jake would start acting desperate like Amir, and Amir would start acting cool like Jake. And I think that's exactly what Darren and I did. We just had a show where we would switch who was the one desperate to be friends with others and the and who really wanted to be friends. And one of the craziest moments of my early career was, I don't remember the exact details of how this happened, but Jake and Amir had started their podcasting network, HeadGum, and they had posted on the internet or something and said they were looking for podcasts to be a part of it. Somebody suggested us. We started emailing with Jake and Amir, and next thing I knew, Jake and Amir had asked me and Darren to come to their mansion in L.A. Jake and Amir straight up had a mini mansion in L.A. They don't have it anymore. Uh, they traded up that mini mansion for like a really cool podcast studio. And I think in the last couple of years, they left the podcast studio. But uh, so we went to this m mini mansion just to meet up with Jake and Amir and Marty in one of their uh, like meeting rooms. And to me, this was one of the coolest moments of my life. I was like, I have made all the right decisions in my life up to this moment to be exactly where I want it to be. And we got invited to so many cool parties with comedians there. This is where I got to hang out with Ben Schwartz multiple times. It was it, That was one of the coolest things to me. Because, you know, Ben Schwartz is cool with Jake and Amir because of the videos. I remember so many times I would try my hardest to be funny in front of Ben Schwartz. And it was really cool when I was on uh, uh, Disney XD, the IGN show, and I got to interview Ben Shorts and Kate Maikuchi. And he's like, oh, you're the guy from Jake and Amir's house. Like, yes. Yes, I am. 
Uh, so yeah, that was one of the highlights of my early career. You hear that? You look pretty proud of yourself. And my last name is Krushed. It's definitely you. Do you want some milk? It's very heavy. So I guess I kind of skipped over it a little bit, but uh, I actually didn't get hired by SourceFed after my three month internship, but Darren did. So Darren kept working at SourceFed uh, 2012, 2013, until I eventually finally got hired in 2014. And by this time, uh, Darren was like either an editor for Phil or like some type of producer. Um, but basically, I got on SourceFed. Everything was great. Hey guys, welcome back to SourceFed. I'm Joe Beretta. And I'm William Haynes. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Hey, Will. Yeah, Joe. My video started doing so well that I got my own show on the weekends. People be like, we were averaging 200,000 views an episode. Claire! Hi, I'm William Haynes. I bet kids would do a lot better in school if they had to post their report cards to Instagram instead of their unfunny text message conversations. And I bet adults would do a lot better in life if they had to post their credit score on Instagram too. I think I just saw the whole world. I'm Obama, I did it better. You're watching people be like. <laughs> At this point, this was one of the greatest years, 2014, 2015, I was doing really well. And then Darren was like a producer at the time on SourceFed, and he was like, all right, Will, what you need to do is tell Discovery and them that you want your own channel. He was like, Source, he was like People Be Like is doing great on uh, the SourceFed channel, but you should make your own channel, and we should make content like this, and I'll produce it. And I was like, that's a brilliant idea, Darren. So then we created People Be Like. A whistle for a cab, and when it came near, the lights and plates said fresh and then a dice in the mirror. If anything, I can say that this cat was rare, but I thought, man, forget it, yo home's the Bel Air. We gained 100,000 subscribers in the first weekend, all these new creative videos, and honestly, I didn't really know what to do. And then like a month or two months in, Darren was like, actually, I'm quitting. Me, 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 me. Canada, Canada, da, Canada, Canada, da, swag. <laughs> Dear it, I'm gonna miss you so much. At this moment, it was devastating for me. I was like, okay, Darren and I can still do Sheeting Text Back podcast, but it was like, in terms of people be like, I've lost my producer, and that's when I was like, I need new friends. And I was like, what about that guy from film school that I knew, John, who I met in improv class? He could probably help me with the production and be a producer. He ended up being an on-camera talent. I want this. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh. That runs. Yeah, this one looks really good. That runs. Oops. What does that mean? It's just like, there's like, it's not like that water ranch. You it's know not what I mean? water ranch. Yeah. I'm not eating no water ranch. Mm. So she did text back, started to slowly gain traction, largely because for some reason the producers at SourceFed were like, not only did they let uh, me put my Twitter and Instagram handles in the description, they, they, since Darren was the producer, he was like, let's just put the she did text back link. We would advertise she did text back at the end of every single episode of People Be Like, which is really what dro drove the numbers so much. So after Darren left SourceFed and People Be Like, he decided to give his best effort at pursuing his music career. And I would show uh, some of the high quality music videos and things he made, but I think it deleted him. I'm even in uh, some of them. And Lynn, uh, one of the producers from SourceFed, did some really good directing on them. But hey, I feel you. Music is a lot different now than it was, uh, you know, when he started doing that stuff back in 2012, you know, his first music video. I would love to show some footage from that, but I don't think that's up anymore. So four years later, after he left SourceFed and People Be Like in 2016, in 2020, he and his girlfriend, Ava, who was my friend first, okay, don't you remember the tall girl video? The thing about you is beautiful. I like who you are as a person, but you're tall as hell and it embarrasses me. Fuck you. Okay. All right. So I think they started dating in like 2015 or something like that, which is crazy. It's almost a decade now. But they moved to New York in 2020 and started posting TikToks every day. And this is like during the height of the TikTok boom, especially if you're posting every single day. And his stuff finally blew up. And I know Darren was so happy because uh, it wasn't based off of being friends with Phil DeFranco or the source fed people. He was finally blowing up off of his own content. And that's it. I don't know if it's because I'm low-key a hater, but when things are overhyped, when everybody loves something, 
I already wrote it off in my head. And I'm, I hate that I do this because I'm an artist. I believe in giving art a proper chance. But damn, when y'all are over hyping a movie, oh, it kills me. I saw some articles about them. At some point he had a show on Vice talking about TikToks, I believe. I'm gonna say something that's controversial that you may not know is controversial. Plants are free. I'm yeah, they had so many viral clips and so many great things. And now he and Ava, I believe, have a podcast uh, talking about some, good to see you or something like that. They have some really good clips. You feel comfortable in a locker room? No. I feel so uncomfortable in a locker room. I put the towel around me and I pull my shorts down with the towel so no one can see my shit. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Yeah. Only I see my shit. Hold on, I'm just staring at my plant, and I know my plant. I really need to adjust it. It looks really bad right now. Um, now they make TikToks and podcasts about breaking up. We broke up. We did. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we did break up. My heart is beating so fast. Is it the weed or is it the nerves? Well, it's talking about something really vulnerable. Yeah, see, I'm used to that. <laughs> I know how to do that. And other... Clips about breaking up or almost breaking up. The winter time is the time that we always come the closest to breaking up. This is true. It's like a little tradition. It's sad out there. And sometimes you'd be saying sh I'm like, <gasps> and sometimes you'd be doing sh and I'm like, ah! anything under 70 degrees is hard for me. We have to put like six layers of clothes on heat tech, spandex, undershirts, overshirts, sweaters, jackets. By the time we're dressed, I'm sweating. Yeah. He also does these other videos about, I guess I would just describe it as his thoughts, like pretty much a long form tweet in TikTok version with really good cinematics behind it. In therapy, I learned that how people feel about me, good or bad, is none of my business. You know so-and-so doesn't like anything about you, right? Anything? No. Oh, look, a dolphin. Young me would low-key seek out this type of information in some sort of quest to validate how I actually felt about myself. So I remember it was in probably 21 or 2022. Um, he got uh, he was a part of the NBC TikTok Accelerator program where pretty much NBC picked like 10 or 11 TikTok personalities to pitch shows to their networks. I think they got like first looks at it or whatever. So all of them made uh, pilots and whatnot. And this was actually the last time I spoke to Darren. So he pretty much asked me to be a part of the show. He asked me some ideas that I thought the show would be really good. And then he never spoke to me again. You know, I like texted him every month for eight months in a row. And I was like, I don't think he's gonna respond. So, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, um, I don't know whatever happened in the show, but that was two years ago. I think my friend Francesca also was a part of this uh, TikTok NBC Accelerator program, so I should ask her what happened to the programs. So, how did the original She Didn't Text Back run end? So, pretty much, like I was saying, 2016 was one of the, uh, the, the first year of my life. I mean, 2014 was the first time I blew up. But 2016 was the time that I was reaping the benefits of everything I had done. I was on Shark Week. I, I got to guess the spot on Shark Week. Uh, a couple months later, I was on Sci-Fi uh, Channel. I, was on, I had two TV uh, shows going on at the same time that summer. Uh, I had gotten my first girlfriend and broken up with. And then two weeks later, after I got my first bro uh, breakup, I was heartbroken. Darren was like, I don't want to <laughs> be your friends anymore. Remember that VidCon where I interviewed Casey Neistat, John Green, Lily Singh, Bernie Burns, and all those people on stage? I remember coming on the drive back from that VidCon was when he let me know it's done. And at the time, I was like, all right, I understand that you don't want to be friends anymore. I understand I'm me. But I was like, we should keep doing the podcast. And Darren was like, hell no. See, I w I'm a professional comedian and performer. So I know what it's like to be on camera with somebody who you don't like. And you just got to be on camera with them and keep recording the damn show. But uh, Darren was like, no. In hindsight, I can see why he w wouldn't want to do something like that. But uh, yeah, it just it ended. And there was all this beef and months of people tweeting us. 
And, you know, I remember in the last couple podcasts we had recorded or just over a while, he would always say, stop tweeting me, stop tweeting us, we're, we're friendship goals. I know that it got to a certain point where he started resenting our friendship. I know that he felt like too much of his career was about us. He did not want it to be the Darren and Will show. He was still trying to find himself as an artist. And it was, yeah, so uh, that's how it ended in, in the, the nicest and easiest and simplest way possible. Um, but what was so crazy about that is we actually did have to film something and pretend to be friends, which was when uh, Noah Grossman from Smosh asked us to be on his show, Eat It or Eat It. This was in the middle of our beef. We had to just put it aside and pretend to be friends for this clip. Oh, no, don't put it in the hat. Don't put it in the hat. Don't put it in the hat, man. What's going to do with that? Uh, what you going to do with that? <laughs> Why am I so sweaty? Yeah. And I remember after, you know, the apologies and we became friends again, we both laughed at about how funny it was and how much fun we had uh, pretending to be friends in the midst of our beat. And uh, yeah, it was a good time. So yeah, that, so I was, so like I was saying, I was experiencing career highs in 2016 and at the same time experiencing personal life lows, my highest highs and lowest lows at the same time. So. I always look back at it, what should have been one of the happiest times of my life, 2016, 2017. I was so wrapped up in my own depression that I couldn't feel how, how great it was. But at the same time during that time, uh, I may have, my team may have left, but I got a new team. I got John, I got Jessica. And those videos just would have never happened if People Be Like had stayed what it was originally intended to be, which was the William Haynes show. So, you know, in hindsight, you know, one of my favorite things about my life, my career, one of my talents is turning something bad into something good. That to me is magic. So all those videos with Jessica and John, you know, we wouldn't have had them. And those are still my best friends to this day. Um, and it's been like eight years. So, you know, uh, sometimes when one door closes, another door opens. And you can say the same thing for Darren. I'm sure he's happy with where he's at. I'm happy with where I'm at, but he don't want to talk to me anymore, and that's his right. So in conclusion, sometimes a friend can mean so much to you, and you guys can do so much together, and I think it's okay for that to be it. Sometimes you guys will outgrow each other, but don't let that stop you from finding new friends. Don't let that stop you from finding yourself, who you are when you're alone. Let, let that time, let yourself take that time to go out, find new friends, be great, and be great to the world.